On this first quarter moon after Lunasa, we turn our minds to the Via Creativa, to the creative way, and start asking ourselves, how can we harvest imagination and light? What imagination are we harvesting in this season? Hello everyone, my name is Charlie and I am a non-binary sci-fi fantasy writer. I'm joined by my wonderful husband, Brian. Hello. Today we're going to be talking about harvesting imagination and light. Because we are at our first Fruits Festival Lunasa, we're focusing on this harvesting image, especially as we're here harvesting those first fruits, those first little inklings that are coming up on the fields how can we bring that in? How can we have more of that in our life? I think a lot of us really need more imagination in our life. I use the word light a lot. I've always used light in terms of God. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God and without him, nothing would have been made that was made. And in him was light. And the light was the life of humanity beautiful prologue to the Gospel of John. And so light and deity are forever joined in my brain, even more than that right now, as it feels like we're going through such dark times with the riots that are going on in Britain and the wars around the world and the economy and the weather and, 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 and. I think we need to be mindful about looking for those places where we can find light, where we can find hope, where we can find whatever it is that pierces the darkness and brings us to the other side. For the new moon, we talked about entering that darkness and harvesting peace. Today, as we're entering this time where we're focused on the via creativa, the creative way, answering that question for ourselves in our own lives, how do you find imagination? How do you find light? And I do mean how, not where, but how. Because I think we need to be practical. We can be all mystical and metaphysical, and I can use all manner of metaphors here about where, and all. that's not going to help anyone. I have a very strong bias that mysticism, spirituality, needs to be practical. It, it needs to be rooted down in our bones in a very practical, honest, and straightforward way. Let's start with a brief recap of the Via Creativa, because there's a quality that it has that often gets missed in people. When Matthew Fox talks about the Via Creativa, he says that it is born from the union of Paths 1 and Path 2, of that Via Positiva and Via Negativa, in that cosmic hospitality and that letting go and letting be, and that welcoming in and letting go, that it's in the union of these two that the via creativa, the creative way, comes forth. And I think it's really important for us to hold that in our minds when we're thinking about the creative way, because creativity really is about welcoming in the ideas. I think we focus on that a lot. I'm waiting for inspiration. I'm waiting for the muse to sing to me and to tell me the things that I should be making. We don't want to think about the other side of that. That's the letting it go. Or we let the letting it go terrify us. Well, I've written this thing. Why should I publish it? I've made this song. Why should I sing it in front of somebody else? I've made this food. What if nobody else likes it? I made this knitwear or crochet wear thing. What will people say if I wear it in public? Maybe I'll just wear it around the house. We put these paralyzing roadblocks between us, really letting our imagination and our creativity flourish. That's why seeing creativity is arising from that hospitality, that devar, that divine word coming into us, that willingness to let go and let be. You really have to do both things to be creative. The Via Creativa, we're told that this is the place where we learn to give birth to God, that we are where this is the place where God is as much mother as child. Both of those images have that welcoming, gracious, via positiva energy to them. 
they also have that letting go energy. A mother has to let their child go to go out into the world. A child has to let go of the family to go out into the world. And all of our creative endeavors do as well. More than anything right now, in this time, in this place, I think the greatest creativity that we're called to is hope. Because hope really is a creative act. Hope isn't an emotion as much as people want it to be. Yeah, we can feel hopeful. It, it creates a sensation in us when we have it. The emotion is more the joy that the hope brings. When you really break it down, it itself is not the emotion. It brings joy. It brings happiness. It, it really is born from the, the joy that's born that we're feeling. We confuse it for an emotion. It's kind of like how we think compassion is an emotion. No, we feel loving kindness. We feel that loving sensation within us. But compassion itself is a mental act. It is an act of choice. If I can use the big words that I like to use, it's a volitional act. It's an act of our will. Hope is very much an act of will. It's not a pie-in-the-sky dream. I think too many people allow hope to be that thing that's just out of reach, to be that thing that's just beyond us. I know it's probably not going to happen, but I have hope. That's a platitude. That's not really hope. Once again, it's without works. Yeah. When said in that manner, it is said without the intention of doing anything. It's more of this is an excuse for the situation rather than normally when it's actual hope. When you say you have hope and you mean it, there is intention behind it. It's that one thing that we say a lot. We go back to this faith without works is dead. That really is core to everything. If you get nothing out of any of the other spiritual ideas that we put forward, if you can just latch on to that faith without works is dead idea, we'll be so much better off than most people that are trying to find a spiritual path. Because that's really the core, the heart of all of it. As we discussed in the Via Negativa on the new moon, that harvesting peace is that active portion that we're engaging in, in that place of darkness. In the Via Creativa, in this creative path, there is this instinct, this urge to say that the action here is to create something, to make a sculpture, make a painting, write a poem, write a story, tell a story cook a meal, bake some bread. There's this very literal understanding of being creative. I don't want to discourage that. I don't want to discourage that in any way. If that's where your heart is, if that's where you're feeling called and moved, do that. We need to expand our understanding of creativity to other aspects of our lives, our creative projects in and of themselves. Maybe that creativity is I'm going to go walk in this other place that I normally don't walk. If that creativity is finding a new restaurant to go hang out at. Finding a new cafe. Finding a new way to find a new artist to listen to. Or a new book to read. Creativity comes in a lot of shapes and sizes. It's not just our creative output. I think this content culture that has <laughs> developed alongside influencer culture has gotten us to think of creativity as having a necessary output. An exercise I found very helpful, getting a deeper understanding of the creative process, especially in regard to imagination, was when I thought about cleaning a room. The simple act of cleaning, via positiva, via negativa, we're in the actual act of cleaning the space, adding pretty things in, removing ugly things out, or the detritus, however you want to word it. It was adding and removing. It was enjoying the awe and wonder of it. Then those two are married. The creative process actually came next. It is when I sat back and allowed others to experience that space that had just been cleaned. I shared it. I observed. I watched how that space was used, how it was enjoyed or not enjoyed. I watched for the gratitude. It's always nice for someone to appreciate it, but there wasn't an expectation of that. There was no attachment to having to have 
someone say, oh, thank you for cleaning this room. That was not there because that's not part of that creative imagination. What was part of that observation was watching to see the natural flow of the space. How did everybody use the cleaned room? Then that carries over into the via transformativa as we'll go into later in the month. In this exercise, that then allowed me to reimagine small aspects of that space to how is it better used? How are others using it? How is it impacted? It was that creative imagination that allowed me to rethink the entire room, realizing sometimes I put artificial structures in when I cleaned. Sometimes I, I put a piece of furniture in a place that blocked the flow. Uh, some of this you get into when doing feng shui. feng shui in a space and it's sitting down and it, that is that creative imagination and the creative process on how is that space actually supposed to be because clean doesn't mean free of dirt there, there may be flowers or plants that need to be added to give life to the space it may be light needs to be added to brighten it it, it may be too much light it may be too many plants <laughs> it may need less but it, it's just that taking that moment to just be in the moment, watch how it is interacted with and imagining, which is pure creativity, just imagining how it could be better. I've often said that the first two paths, the via positiva and via negativo, are internal. They're looking at, they're inviting in their internal work. For the most part, they are. And this other two, the paths three and four, the via creativa and via transformativa, are outward paths. Whereas in the via positiva, we're welcoming it. We're allowing that divine word to come into us. We're practicing cosmic hospitality and learning that hospitality is earthiness. And bringing all of those good things in, whether they're into our hearts, into our lives, into our homes whether it's doing the internal work on ourselves that is done on that path. In the Via Creativa, this is the turning outward. This is the moving out. I don't personally believe that creativity can happen within. Creativity requires some form of external action. Whether that's just practicing body prayer, that you were praying internally, just holding it all inside and now you're adding gestures and ritualizing your prayer in that way whether that's learning to sing with your own voice or dance in the moment or all of the other creative acts that come out the via creativa is an outpouring we've welcomed everything in the via positiva we've learned what we need to let go and let be in the via negativa and now we're allowing it to flow through us we are becoming a channel, a conduit. We are part of that flow now. There is that need to share. That can be as simple as telling another person about a thing. You don't have to publish your work to the whole wide world. Don't ever think that's what I'm saying when I say share your stories or share your music or what have you. You don't have to start a bakery to share your baked goods. It is good to share them. That could be as simple as if you live in a very rural place, maybe bake something special for your dog. There are a lot of really nifty dog foods that you can make that require a lot of creativity. And I say that as somebody like I grew up very rural. Remember when it was just me and my dog running around, right? I, I didn't have any friends that lived close by. That was always an event when you would go and actually visit other people because they live so far away. If that's your case... Share with the birds. Go outside and tell the birds your stories. Tell the birds. Tell them to the wind. Tell them to the trees. To me, that's just as valid. Whether or not you experience the spirit of that tree, the spirit of those birds communing with you or not, you're still sharing. You're still taking that step to speak to something outside yourself, to share with things outside of yourself. And that is just vitally important. This is a place where we're getting in touch with our creativity, with our imagination, with that light that ever shines within us. A while back, I did a piece where I talked to you about the idea that we live 
in the Zel Shaddai. We live in the shadow of the Almighty. And what that means, this image of all creation is God dancing before God. The shadow that's cast into the void in between is what makes our world, that we are all living in the shadow of the Almighty. How are you casting your shadow? How are you sharing your light? That's what the Via Creativa is about, is learning to interact with that play between light and shadow, to bring it in and let it flow through you. Jesus used a lot of light analogies for us. We are to be the shining city on a hill, that we should let the light of our eyes shine out, that we shouldn't put our light under a bushel. He, he used these light images a lot. That's because light, like creativity, can't be contained. Hope, like creativity, cannot be contained. It has to be free. It can be blocked. That's a very different thing than containing it. Even then, light gets creative. Have, it just travels in one direction, and then once it's blocked, it gets creative and goes in another direction. The simple trick is hold a mirror up, and you can see the beam of light somewhere else because it, it reflects. And it doesn't just reflect off the first time it gets blocked, it reflects sometimes can even amplify slightly as it reflects because it starts reflecting off multiple places. Why is the sky blue? It's reflecting off the ocean. No, actually, it's the refracting light. Oh, yeah. The way the light hits yeah. the atmosphere, it bends and shakes, and the blue light scatters. It just scatters so much that we see it, and the other light makes it down to us. The light that feeds our plants is actually red light. The plants are green. Because there's too much green light. They need to reflect that light back so they don't get burned. So they're green because they're reflecting that green light. So they don't get burned by it. But the green light isn't what nourishes them. If you've ever worked with grow lights, if you've done any, you'll notice that they're very red. And the reason for that is not because, oh, does that look cool? It's because that those are the wavelengths of light that the plant actually needs. There's no point in generating, wasting the energy to generate green light which is there in the white light all along because the plant will just reflect that back. It doesn't need it. It doesn't want it. It's too much of it. And that right there, if you think about it, is what we're talking about here in that via creativa, via positiva, via negativa balance. It's letting in, inviting in that path one, the red light, letting go of, reflecting via negativa, path two, the green light, so that it can, via creativa, Path three, grow and make all of those beautiful leaves and flowers and everything else. That's why we have such a variety in plants. When you see a plant that has kind of reddish leaves, oh, well, it's wanting that red light. It doesn't want that red light anymore. It's reflecting that back. That's a powerful idea. It's one that's so subtle we don't think about it because it's all around us. You look up the window and you see gr grass or a tree leaf or something. And you see that green and you just... It's green. There's so much in the meaning of that green leaf. That's the power of the Via Creativa and taking this time that we do to meditate on it. Whether it's just on the first quarter moon, I tend to focus on the Via Creativa and the time period between the main moon phases. So between now and the full moon, that's the monthly cycle of the Via Creativa for me. I take that time to meditate on the third path to think about all of those I guess you could call them hidden messages that are out there that aren't really hidden. They're just, and again, a repeated theme that we keep going to. We just don't notice them. Yeah. They're subtle. They're a still, small, whispered voice in a loud room full of conversation. Because we need hope right now. We need creativity right now. We need to live right now. It's so hard in this late stage capitalist world that we live in to find those moments of joy and peace and lightness, not just light, but lightness. We feel so burdened, so heavy. And yeah, I could use as a platitude, right? That wonderful quote from Jesus, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden and take my burden upon you for it is light. Yeah. I remember as a child singing that wonderful hymn, cast your cares upon Jesus, right? I remember singing that when I was a kid. And it sounds so simple, but it is one of the hardest things to do. One, it requires us to 
use our creative mind to understand what we need to hold on to and what we need to let go of. This is where creative, the Via Creativa, the third path, looks back at the two that came before it. It also looks forward. What things need changing? That's what we're going to be talking about when the full moon comes about. What are we changing? What needs change? What needs transformation and celebration brought to it? So here we are. What creative things can we do? Do we need to do? Are we not seeing? How have we gotten locked into a certain mode, and a I, certain habitual action? That's why I like that exercise of the simple act of cleaning. It is a simple thing. Most of us think of it as a chore. It's drudgery that we just do because it needs doing. Some of us are are fortunate enough to find a lot of joy in it with the power of imagination and the creative path, one can simply shift that perspective, can go, I'm going to clean this space. It is going to be an act of compassion given to everyone that enters that space, including yourself. And as an act of compassion, it's done without thought of reward. But knowing with that hope and faith, good things will come out of it. And then with that power of creation, power of the creative imagination, making that shift and then doing the cleaning, it is now a gift, not one that you have to have a thank you for. It is just a gift that you can enjoy, that any everybody else entering the space can enjoy, that you can then also further contemplate, meditate upon how it can be transformed for the next time you do it, so that then you can make it an even better gift. So as we're going about our days, or even if it's just right now while you're hearing the sounds of our voices, just take a moment, a little breath, and ask yourself, where is that light? Where is that lightness? Where is that creativity? Where is my imagination right now? Where are you finding those things? Where are you practicing those things? Where are those things calling to you? They may not be in the most obvious places. Maybe you need to be creative about the path you take to work. Maybe you need to be creative about how you do your sleep schedule or the routine that you have to get up in the morning. Maybe you need to have some creativity in how you pray or meditate. Maybe you need to have some creativity in your meal planning. Have you gotten into a rut? Anytime anything starts feeling routine, I think it's important for us To ask ourselves that question, is this routine because I want it to be? Because this is what I have chosen? Or because I just got into a pattern and it became a habit? So much of what we're trying to do in the creative life, in the spiritual life, is learning to see those habitual patterns and which ones need to be broken free from. It's very easy for us to just get into a pattern. That's really the power of the third path. It shows us where we need to bring that imagination, that creativity, and that light so that we can change. That's what the path four is all about. But before little baby Jesus can walk, we have to give birth to him. We do that when we learn to trust the divine imagination living within us and to be co-creators with God in this amazing and wonderful cosmos. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you have enjoyed today's episode. If you have, please like us or whatever you can do, wherever you're listening. If you're at a place where you can leave a review, that helps us out immensely. Don't forget to share if you think that somebody you know would benefit from hearing this. That helps us out more than you know. And if you have a few pennies you can throw our way, if you head over to creationspass.com, you can join our Substack over there and get the classes as they start coming out or you can go over to my Kofi or patreon i'm ce dorset on both and that helps with everything that i do including the stories the music and everything else thank you so much for spending this time with us and may the blessings of the first quarter moon be upon you bye bye